In this lesson, you will learn about using a main form with subforms to find and enter data. Hi, this is Crystal. The sample data comes from a custom shop that builds and sells movable storage structures that are delivered to your property. When a sale is made, it may be paid outright, carried in-house, or purchased by a finance company. This is a main form with subforms. The main form, based on the pay groups table, stores customer and date. There are also calculations and ways to find and filter information. There are three subforms. A form is called a subform when it is used by embedding it on another form. The subform for payments is continuous and can display multiple records. You can see amounts, where they come from, and what they apply to. A customer may make payments on several orders with one check or charge, or pay part of a purchase with cash and part using another method. Customer history is a subform that is synchronized to the main form using customer ID for link master fields and link child fields. It shows the sum and total number of orders and payments and calculates the balance due. In the upper left is yet another subform that displays the company logo. On the right are two list boxes showing information relevant to the customer. On top, the tan list box displays the customer purchase data with serial number, order date, and balance. Click on a row to copy the serial number to the Windows clipboard. Once copied, you can paste the serial number anywhere to another document or into a form control. I am pasting this on the last row, so it turns into a new record, and another blank line for a new record appears. See the pencil in the record selector area? I don't really want to create a new record here, so I press Escape to undo the new entry. And since the new record is not yet gone, I press Escape again to undo creating a new record. So the first Escape undid the combo, and the second one undid the record. The yellow list box shows payment dates, how much was paid, the number of payment transactions, and also finds a selected payment group. As the date in the box is selected, the payment group shows payments for the selected date. In the form header, there are unbound combo boxes to find and filter records. Filters can be set for customer, order, and or date. There are more than a thousand payment group records. When the form is filtered for a customer, you will see the number of payment group records for that customer in the navigation area for access. You will also see the list of dates for payments in the yellow box to the right. This group shows eight payments on five orders with three different payment methods. The combos to the right allow the user to find existing records by customer, payment, product serial number, order number, account or check number, and date. When the filter is set to another customer, the combo boxes to find records are also filtered. Clicking on All shows all the records again and also removes the filter from the find combos. Suppose someone comes in to make a payment. Filter for the customer. There are five orders. You can look through payments one group at a time by clicking the navigation buttons built into Access in the lower left. As you move, subforms and other information on the screen 
is updated. Click the New button to make a new record. Because the filter is set for the customer, the customer is automatically filled. The date is automatically set to the current date and you are ready to enter payment details. If the customer has a set amount to spend and wants to allocate payments, you can use the calculator area. Enter 800 into Amount Allocate. This customer has five open orders that are consecutively numbered. The first order is 2142. It is quick to enter the order numbers this way, when you can. The balances for each order are calculated and displayed. As you enter the payment amounts, the calculator automatically updates, making it easy to see how much is left to allocate. If you want to pay something off, copy the order balance and paste it into the payment amount. Now there is a negative amount left to allocate. Payments on other orders will have to be reduced. As amounts are changed, the calculator updates, making it easy to adjust how much gets paid on each order. To disperse all that is left to a single payment, double-click. All these payments are coming from one check. In the Access settings, I have my Enter Key behavior set to go to the next record. This means pressing Enter goes down, just like in Excel, and Control Ditto to copy the value above also works in Excel. If you want to make a payment on a specific product, one way is to click on it in the Customer Purchase List, which copies the serial number to the clipboard, then paste into a new payment record. The customer wants to close this order and pay cash for the balance. The order balance is copied, then pasted into the payment amount. As payments are made, the date edited is changed for the main form also. To update the main form, click on the pencil in the record selector area. When the record is saved, the balances in the customer purchase list box are updated. To write a note, click to set the focus since it's not a tab stop. The status bar text gives you a friendly reminder to press Shift F2 to zoom since the text may be longer than the display area. In the Zoom box, you can set the font. I like to make it bigger. The Payment Detail subform and the list box to show and find payment dates are anchored to the bottom of the form. They stretch and shrink as the form gets taller and shorter. Future lessons will address problems, enhance capabilities, and explain more about the data structure and how the main form and subforms work. Thanks for joining me. Through sharing, we will all get better.